Time to get spotty on Y25. A very fantastic, though, chilly Saturday afternoon. Let's talk about matter sporting headlines, both local and beyond. My name is Max Olwasika. A big show lined up this particular afternoon. You don't want to miss double two and six to starting with the word touch. And also, you can join our social media handles at Wasika Max or at Y254 channel. Hashtag touchline Y254. Of course, as we speak right now, the last second. Uh, leg of the HSBC World 7 Series. Currently under we land and 7. Kenya has already lost its first group game uh, against Fiji 24-17 and of course the subsequent games coming uh, as we continue speaking about matter sporting headlines. Of course they play against Samoa at 3 20 p.m. East African time, then they will wind up their group tie against France. Looking forward probably to cement their status so that they can avoid relegation. That forms the basis of our discussion. London 7th review and preview as well as Enterprise Cup final happening uh, this particular afternoon at RFU grounds. Cabras Rugby Football Club after losing against KCB in Kenya Cup finale. Looking forward probably to bounce back and beat their opponents in Palace Saracen. 4 p.m. East African time kickoff. We're going to speak about that. But before we do, of course, we will also talk about the headlines of the week in Kenya. Gourmet Football Club have been crowned the champions, winning for the third time running. And of course, this is their 18th record title. Joining me to talk about matters, you know, sporting headlines, sports pages, and of course, the preview for London Sevens and Enterprise Cup final are people from an integral part as far as uh, matter sports in the country is concerned. Robust duo Simon Moraya has been here before. He's not familiar face. Sam, how have you been, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Easy. I'm all right. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you too. Try. And Ngaro Kamuya is already, is also joining us. Ngaro, big man. It's been a while. It has been a while. I don't know why it just been a while. Thank you very much for having me back. <laughs> but now good that you are back. Let's yes. speak about what happened in the week. Gormar Football Club were crowned overall champions uh, despite drawing against their football club in midweek. And now it's their rec record 18th title. Monotony as far as Kenyan top flight football is concerned. And it's not going to stop anytime soon uh, because what we need to look at is uh, how professional uh, the side has been, how the team is being run. And I know there have been a, a lot of complaints uh, sometimes um, about monies and stuff like that. But uh, if you look at Gorimahia Football Club, the only time we've actually had this season when they were complaining about money was once or twice. Um, so uh, it just goes to show what can happen if a, a team is run professionally. Uh, so will the dominance stop? No, it won't stop anytime soon. Um, and uh, do I see any team uh, being able to match up to Gormahia at the moment? No. Uh, in fact, I remember at the beginning of the season when uh, they were playing in the Champions League, most people, and, and the Confed Cup, uh, most people were thinking that uh, uh, they were going to not make it because at some point they were trailing uh, Bandari and Madare United by um, as much as 10 points. But they were able to uh, gain the ground, uh, come back and win comfortably with two games to spare. Now, is it high time Gourmet has conquered local football for so much? Now, is it high time they replicate the same glittering show when it comes to continental football? Because when it comes to CAF Champions League and CAF Confederation, it's been elusive for the Kenyan teams. What's the secret now that they should, uh, the um, proper strategy they should lay in place if they have to sparkle like they have done locally? Just piggybacking off what Samia said, um, granted, in Kenya, they are the perhaps the most professionally run football team. But when you go to the continental level, that's another story. They're still lagging behind uh, when you compare them to their partners or to their competitors. And I think that's what the problem is. Look, in sport, and we keep on saying this, uh, Max, in 2019, you need money to run sport. And Gorma here, for, for, for a club who I believe is the biggest club in every sport in Kenya, and is the biggest club in terms of football in Eastern Central Africa, I think there's much more they can be able to utilize, and I think there's much more they can be able to achieve. So. I think the reason why they're not able to replicate, replicate their dominance, their local dominance on the continental level, is because their competitors are way ahead when it comes to professional setups. So the leadership at Gormaya needs to sit down and say, hey, look, we need to do something about this. We need to convert this either into a limited liability company. You need to attract strategic investors. Because there's a club actually you're seeing in Ethiopia that has actually converted. Ethiopia, for all the places, have already converted into a limited liability partnership. But we know why such things have been stalled. It's because, like we keep on saying, the people who are running sports in our country right now are not really innate for the sport. And that's why they stole such things that are going to seal any loopholes uh, 
from them making any money on the side. One man who's been <laughs> insisting on sports <laughs> development and commercialization of the same. Of course, coronation for Gurmaya Football Club happening this particular afternoon at Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos County when they take on Poster Rangers. Let's take a look and listen in to what Hassan Okte, that tactician, had to say immediately after their clash against the football club that ended in one all. And of course, their subsequent uh, crown of 18th record title as far as Kenya Premier League is concerned. Let's listen in to Hassan Okte speaking. It was so difficult, it was so hard. Uh, league, as you guys know, league is big marathons. And you, in this marathons and this month, you have so many injuries, so many back-to-back -back games. And when you play in Africa as well, it's different uh, motivation there. It's a massive games. then travel, sleep, play, then come to play local games. Of course, that is Hassan Okte, the tactician for Gurma Football Club, speaking to members of the press immediately after being awarded an accolade of coach of the man's award, Cutters of Sports Journalist Association, that is Ace Jack, after, of course, his heroic exploits that led to his club being crowned champions for 18th record title, their third consecutive, and of course, dominating Kenyan football. And Mariah, you had something to say with regards to what Narva had said earlier. Um, I, I just wanted to, to, to say that. Um, um, I, I think Gormahia this year did make strides mm -hmm. in continental football and they were able to achieve um, a feat that uh, very many other teams that you'd call professional uh, that you, that have had structures mm -hmm. for a pretty long time mm -hmm. um, were not able to achieve, just mm -hmm. making it um, out to the knockout stages, mm -hmm. into the quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and um, um, I'm hoping, um, just to now echo what you said, mm -hmm. that the money that they made there mm -hmm. is going to be used properly and uh, uh, making some money off selling to Isenge. Mm -hmm. uh, Yesterday, um, that was confirmed uh, to Isenga going to Petro Atletico mm -hmm. in, in Angola. Angola. Um, again, Gormahia is becoming a selling club. Yeah. We, we've just seen over the last two seasons, mm -hmm. like the, their best striker they sell, but they are able to uh, mold somebody else. But this time around, we don't know who it's going to be because uh, um, I'm not very sure Denis Oliech will continue playing for them, mm -hmm. um, considering the scoreboards that, that they had. Um, him playing for Gormahia FC, mm -hmm. uh, earning a salary of uh, 300,000 Kenya shillings a month, which they were unable to pay at some point mm -hmm. and I remember he even boycotted some mm -hmm. of the matches mm -hmm. so um, what we really now uh, need to look at especially when you talk about God Mahi and the other teams um, in the KPL uh, is, is to just ask them honor the contracts that you give players because it's really sad I saw um, a text message that was doing the rounds uh, on social media uh, from Mount Kenya uh, FC, mm -hmm. uh, former Nakumata FC, uh, where the, the players were literally asking for a fundraiser for them to be able to honor their remaining matches. And mm -hmm. that's a very, very uh, sad state. Mm -hmm. Why get or why purchase a football team when you know very well that you cannot be able to manage it? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's good, it's what you're saying. We, there's this fundraiser culture that's in sports right now. And, and I think it's because of running sports as a pastime. Football as it is, I mean, it has the biggest eyeballs in this country and it should be able to attract the right corporate sponsors if packaged well. And I think um, that, that issue of the fundraiser, we are very content with that. We come here, we raise a bit of money and guys are able to play or own a one, two, three fixtures, but we're not saying- Short-term strategy. It's, exactly, it's a short-term strategy. So I, I, I agree with what Sam is saying. We need to guys need to start thinking five, ten years down the line. We put in structures right now that we start realizing ten years down the line. Because, like we keep saying, Max, when you have our offline discussions, um, we need to stop looking at sports as a pastime. Yes. Uh, in the West, um, and, and I dare say this, if you look at Liberia, their current president is a former football player. Right? A former world, world player, player of the year, yeah. George Ware. So you can imagine the amount of you know, people we are shutting out by not making sports professional. Still on matters, Kenyan football. Of course, Kenya, uh, the national team around the stars is preparing for the African Cup of Nations. Continental shop is slated for a few days from now, as you speak, of course, happening in Egypt uh, later next month. And of course, they will be traveling to uh, France on 31st, the end of this particular month, uh, uh, to prepare for the Continental shop. Is of course, qualifying after 15 years of waiting. And uh, we've seen several assessments, several versions and interpretation with regards to Kenyan chances of you know sparkling during the upcoming African Cup of Nations, especially after uh, Sebastian Minya, the Frenchman, named a 30-man squad that will do duty. And of course, it will be trimmed down to 
close to 23 to represent the country at the upcoming shops. Let's see what transpired at Kasarani during their first training session and of course they asked uh, subsequent opinions by you know former international Musa Otien who also spoke with regards to Kenyan chances. And uh, that's mean the training session today was not so long. Uh, we need to, to build the fitness of the players, but uh, not to, to break the player also. Uh, it's always to try to find a good balance for that. It's the reason to also why you, you saw at the end of the training session, uh, we had some uh, physical job for some of them. Uh, we didn't play uh, last weekend. And uh, we're on the way to, to try to be able to have also some answer physically. Uh, or is uh, Masoud now? Uh, because uh, it would be necessary for me to, to take a decision. Today I, uh, I gave 30 names. Even I'm not prisoner of, uh, for the 30 names, I'm also pragmatic if I uh, discover uh, a good one, I can put him in my final list. I, I'm not afraid about it. Uh, and after, for next week, we will reduce at 26 because we will travel with only 26 players. It's the reason I want to see some answer today. I'm feeling poor, son, and I'm here. The motivation, the opportunity, poor, and I'm Kenyan players, uh, not uh, only when you're on end up chasa, but the entire, the entire nation. Ni, ni opportunity mzuri na pia ni chance kwa kila kila player. Uh, my fans kwanza ni kuwashukuru kwa vile pia wameshindwa wame to support kila siku hawajaacha uh, kuja study na tunaomba uh, sahi kwa hii time vile tunaenda ku represent uh, uh, Kenya tunaomba tu support yao kwa sana kila mahali najua wengine utakuwa nao lakini pia wenye watakuwa wamebaki home watu watu support na pia watu watoke kwa prayers zao pia tunajua to to make uh, to make uh, different when the to kind of Afghan majaki like to talk about it shall go as a mongo. Just like you motivated Sala Kutakolia Afghan, sababu ni pride ya country. Then second ni ni market kwa kwa chiza juenye. Then to ntaka ku represent family zetu. Na feel to tap on poor. Kito kwanza ni to focus kwenda tu to the next stage, then everything ita flow. Mafikiri ya tuwa foa ikuwa ni Afkom Raisi, ilikuwa ni ngumu sana, kwa sababu ganya sama ilikuwa ni ngumu, kwa sababu unapata pia kiangale mpira wa sasa, sans imebadilisha sana mpira, kwa sababu siti lenda tuwa foa, tulikuwa tujua wa chiza jua mbao tunenda kuchila nao. Tukwa tunawajua tu maybe individual, tukwa tunawajua kama team. Oh, unangalia mchezaji, unangalia ni alhazi diof, likuwa na msafot. Kama yuko kijani, ama kama achizia Liverpool, we unachizia Santos, ama vijana wei tunapata. Tukwa tunapata na kwa michi, ambo ilikuwa ni jambo, at least ni ngumu sana kwa, at least kitu kucheza. At the time, unapata likuwa tunajua uneza mwakaji, ama ujua strong points zake, likuwa ni viti, likuwa tusha figuwa bao. Nafikia kwa sasa kama tumegile tumegingia, tumegia kwa Cup of Nation 2019. Nafikia nashukuru sana kwanza wachezaji, mafans, nafikia kiu kiangalia shifu. Government yetu pia mekuja on board kwa saidia. Nafikia sisi kama wakenya tunikuja kwa shangilia kwa ombea. Nafikia sika zingumu sana, nafikia si raisi sana. 
nafikiria kwa sasa unaona coach Minya amekuja na vijana ambao nafikiria in team ambao wanaweza sema ni one of the best team ambao imekuwa assemble au kwa na pesa mingi napata pia upande wa kusafiri upande wa allowance kile kitu nikuko iko sambamba nafikiria tu ni kudos kusema kwanza kwa shirika la Tampila nchini nafikiria ni cup of nation ambao vijana wanataka kuji vinjari vizuri sana kwa sababu maombi si tumawapatia nafikiria tu ni hao si ndio kwa tuko pale watu wa form tulishinda mechi moja na mimi kiangalia hii team tuko nayo nafikiria hata kwa final tunaweza fika kwa sababu ukiangalia kwa kila position nafikiria ni team ambao wachezaji wako wachezaji wanaweza kujituma Course preparations ahead of African Cup of Nations for the national team around the stars have intensified and fading out there. Is Sebastian Minya, the Frenchman, speaking after their first training session at Mo International Sports Center, Kasarani. Musa Mohamed, the captain, acting captain, of course, in absence of Victor Wanyama, also speaking alongside former international Musa Otiona and Farouk Shikalo, the goalkeeper. Gentlemen, what are your takes with regards to preparation ahead of AFCON? Do you think, are you satisfied with the preparation so far? Uh... One thing I'm satisfied about uh, is the funding that we've gotten from the government um, because uh, for the first time we have a team that is preparing for something that has money. They cannot sit back and complain because uh, traditionally what we've gotten used to as far as Kenyan football is concerned have been uh, the complaints from the federation, from the players of unpaid allowances, um, with not having money for them to be able to play friendly games. This time they have the money um, and the coach is being paid directly by the government. Is that right? I'm sure my friend here is going to talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, <laughs> no, you finish, you finish before. <laughs> but then again, um, I also want to address the issue about the squad. Yes. Because uh, uh, we've had complaints, so many people complaining about the squad. I, I feel so sorry for Jesse Were, and I'm one of those people uh, who's still insisting he should have been given a chance, uh, despite the fact that um, he's been given so many chances as, and he's only scored um, like two goals for the Harambe Stars in like 26 appearances. But sometimes you go with a player who's on the form of his life. Just aware this season has been brilliant at, at Zesco and not just uh, playing in the Zambian league but also playing continental football. He's been that guy who's been carrying Zesco. So I still do not get why he was not called into the team uh, on the basis of the past. Give him a chance. Yeah. Uh, this is continental football. He's played um, continental football this season for Zesco. He's played bri brilliantly. He's played very well. He has scored goals. Give him a chance. I, and even if you don't start him, put him on the bench. Have him as, as that cushion. Because uh, I remember we were talking here uh, two weeks ago uh, about um, the strength in numbers uh, when we were looking at uh, the Liverpool as well as the Tottenham uh, teams uh, and Man City as well. Because you look at the people who actually came came through for them at the final minute, especially when you look at Liverpool. It was not the regulars. It was the people who are usually on the so bench. because e Exactly. So these are the players who come in and they feel they have to appoint to prove. And I feel that's the same thing that should have happened to Jesse Were. Give him a chance. Let him come and prove himself. Because I know if he was named in that squad, he was literally going to fight for the shot because he knew that one, um, his, his selection was going to be very controversial. Uh, Minya has always had doubts about him. So he would have played for the shot. He would have made sure he fought for the team. And probably he would have been that catalyst that would have seen us um, do more. Not to say that we cannot be able to get out of uh, the group that we are in because um, I look at that group. And personally, I feel the only team that we need to, to be scared about is not even Senegal. I've been telling people it's not Senegal, it's Algeria, uh, because most of their players play locally, apart from four or five uh, players, including uh, Riyad Mahrez. Uh, but if you look at the Senegal t team, it's, it's a team, yes, full of professionals, but we also have a lot of individual players in there, so they don't really gel uh, very well as a team when they play continental football. I'd be afraid of a team like the Ivory Coast, for example, because these are players uh, that even during the qualifiers, you can literally see the chemistry that is there between them. So um, Senegal, I'm not scared about Tanzania we will weep uh, so Algeria is a team that we need not to underrate and I'm sure if we are able to contain Algeria we'll be able to make it out of the group Lara, you are one man who've not been advocating for government support financial support to to teams clubs and general sporting activities in the country but you know that gesture shown by them through ministry of sports to pump a lot of resources uh, in the assistance of national team ahead of the continental shop is what's your opinion about that now can you imagine um, a situation where 
government was pumping in the 200 million, but FKF actually had money. Can you imagine how the Harambe stars would have been comfortable going into uh, the AFCON 2019? They would not have been having, like you're saying, issues about unpaid allowances. Those, those would have been problems we don't know about. And that's where I come from. Government's work is to provide an environment for the thriving of the corporate sector, for lack of a better word. If you go to the West, these organizations, these football clubs, these basketball clubs, and let's stick to football clubs, are actual corporate organizations. If you look at Arsenal FC, it's listed on the London Stock Exchange. These are fully-fledged corporate organizations that are employing millions of people, or let me say thousands of people. So my take is that, granted, it's a very good move from the, from the government, from the Ministry of Sports, to pump in 200 million shillings. But I'm just looking at a scenario where FKF would have had the money. Then this 200 million would have actually been either of two things. You go into cash reserves for the FKF, or you actually have a, a good footing when you're going to AFCON 2019. Because look, preparing for such a tournament is not easy. They're going to be preparing in France. It's not going to be cheap. So I, I, I just think that we need to move to the, to the, we need to move the West direction, where basically government's work is, have you built stadiums? Do we have uh, football grounds in estates? All this land that you're seeing that is being grabbed by people for estates, footballs, uh, for football grounds in estates, what is government doing about it? And then the policy is already there, the legislation is already there. Corporate organizations, sponsor sports, you're not going to pay tax on that money. Bus. <laughs> and then there's also... And Sammy, Sammy, probably your quick thoughts with regards to... There is something that elicited, you know, heated conversation, especially on Twitter from Kenyan football followers over the kit that was released. <laughs> and of course, it would be getting retailed at around 3,500 Kenyan shillings. I don't know, what's your quick thoughts with regards to that particular kit? Of course, ahead of the AFCON. Uh, well, I'll summarize it. Shambles. <laughs> there is no Kenyan. There it is. Yeah, Why there is. shambolic? Um, you're just looking at that jersey. In fact, um, as a football fan, any football fan who looks at that, the kit, the way it is, the red and the white, the first thing that comes to mind is Tunisia. Because that's what uh, uh, the Carthage uh, Eagles were. Um, and when I first saw it like this, that's what came to mind. In fact, I remember I, I responded to Macron when they were talking about their sponsorship package and talking about that particular jersey. And I was like, come on, guys, we are losing identity. Um, what we had with Al Sports uh, during the, the qualifiers was a kit that had a Kenyan identity. Uh, if we look at um, our rugby players, yes, we have problems that are happening right now uh, with the sevens team. Um, uh, but if you look at the kits that they wear, they have that Kenyan identity. If you look at our athletes, and Nike he has always perfected these and done it very very well you can see the national colors looking at the jersey that we are just looking at right now both home and away i think tunisia i, I think egypt you know more of uh, the north african teams as opposed to uh, the kenyan side but then um before I trash it so much, I'm waiting to see the shot and the socks because then maybe uh, there is a, a blend of colors that will represent <laughs> the national team. But to me, just looking at that jersey, I would not waste my money. Now, right. How comes this guy is uh, have a contrary opinion with regards to the kit? Yet they always say plain is a sign of simplicity. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you see, he's not really complaining about the plane. He's really complaining about the lack of an ident identity. identity. And I do, on the face of it, can you, if you look at a Brazil jersey, you know what it is. If you look at a France jersey, you know what it is. If you look at an England jersey, you'll know this belongs to the Cameroon, Cameroon South Africa, 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 you know, South Africa, Nigeria, Senegal, you know. Ivory Coast. So that's, I think that's what he's complaining about. He's not complaining about the fact that it's plain. But hey, come on, there's, there's a bit more work I'm sure they're gonna be able to do to produce a jersey that's uh, uh, significant appealing. with us and appealing to the to the to the eye on the continental stage. Yes. Oh, the continental we're not talking stage. about playing locally. Yes. We're talking about playing on the continental stage. What is our identity as Kenya? Of course, before we talk about the main business of the day, a uh, review and preview of London Sevens and Enterprise Cup final coming up. Mm. Uh, in a few hours from now, as you speak, of course, happening at RFU grounds. We're going to speak about something that has been trending. There is a new team and a new king in town called Wazito FC. And of course, as you speak right now, they are second, they are first on the log. They are preparing for their next game against administration police tomorrow. And of course, uh, if they maintain the same run, they will be guaranteed of promotion to Kenyan Premier League. And of course, they have got a new bus, state of the art, it's being unveiled this particular afternoon. Ricardo. Uh, 
He scored who? Also, no, no, no. <laughs> Ricardo Bado is a man who is making headlines positive wise because of you know his interest and passion for sports. Yesterday, he signed a contract worth 100 million with Kenya Basketball Federation, and of course, they have flight like basketball tournaments now coming on board. What do you make of um, that headline? This is somebody who has a passion for sports. Yeah, uh, we're not just talking about an entrepreneur who's looking for money, which is uh, the most unfortunate thing when we look at uh, especially African sport, uh, where we find there are entrepreneurs who get in who just think about the money side of it, uh, but they're not passionate enough. And, and this is also happening um, also at the global stage. And this is where now I also look at... Uh, I'm sorry to bring in the whole Manchester United issue, uh, but it's because um, it's my team, but then they've become such a commercial side that we've lost people within the team who are passionate enough. Uh, Badoa is very passionate about Wazito. In fact, if you look at the way he tweets, <laughs> <laughs> that guy literally will insult his team, will insult his players because he's angry. You can see that passion in him. He gets very angry when his team loses he, he actually celebrates uh, when they win. And I know earlier I had said that um, nobody uh, can be able to surpass uh, Gormahi in terms of professionalism in this country. But was it at the moment, the way they, were going, they are going, and as long as Badoa is there, they are going to be a force to reckon with. And he's laying down structures that I, I, I don't see even Gormahia matching at the moment. And uh, Gormahia are, are the current champions. They've been, really been struggling. I, I think they even got a bus uh, a season ago. Um, this is somebody who knows his team is g g going into the K uh, KPL and is going to ensure that in the KPL, they're not just going to be pushover boys. They're going to be competitors. The next thing we are going to see, if he's able to pump in 100 million into basketball, imagine how much money he's going to pump into Azito once they get into the KPL. This is somebody that you're sure is going to invest in good players. He's going to ensure that his team is well run. And uh, believe you me, uh, even when it comes to the issue of coaching, we are going to see a team that is properly coached and they are going to play competitive matches as far as preparations are concerned um, off-season. This for me is going to be the team that people need to watch. And I know, Narwa, your interests and the interest of that man match, and probably that's the same reason you should look for him <laughs> because <laughs> his, his, his passion for sports commercialization is also unmatched. But what do you make of uh, that particular development? Do you think uh, the entrance of such fellas, such individuals into Kenyan sporting arena will, will get the industry to another level? You see, too, <coughs> there are three things that contribute towards the revenue generation of a sporting organization. The number one is commercial, what they call commercial sponsorships. So you either have the shirt, like the shirt sponsors and uh, merchandising, things like merchandising. That's number one. The second biggest honor for sports organizations is uh, broadcast rights. And the third honor is gate revenue, right? Now, your team actually, Manchester United, in 2017, 48% of their revenue was generated from commercial deals. 32% was generated from broadcasting rights, and the last 20% was from gate revenue. For you to achieve those numbers, you need a huge capital investment. And that's where he comes in. So he comes in with a sponsor. He pours, let's say, 100 million shillings to get these things running. Because remember, it's eyeballs. For you to get guys into the stadium, you need to market the team. True or false? You need to market the sport. So I go out. Marketing is going to cost money. I mean, people running without marketing is going to cost money. You have to pay salaries for the players. You have to pay salaries for the guys who are managing the team. Now, when you market it, you bring in the guys. The first thing that happens is that as a sponsor, uh, or as, uh, as this guy, what's his name, sorry? Badoa. Badoa, 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 Badoa yes. Um, as he's pouring the 100 million shillings, they reduce the pressure on him because now you have, a new, you have, a you have a, um, an arm generating revenue in ticket revenues, in, in gate revenues, sorry. Now, once you get people into the stadiums, the next thing is eyeballs. The corporate organizations are going to be coming here. There you get that six, seven thousand people watching a game every weekend. We want to be there. So they sponsor. So again, what happens to Badoa? He's less weight on him. He doesn't have to keep on removing 100 million shillings every year. So there's a huge capital investment. But in five years down the line, if, and if you take the company route, if you take the company route, he's drawing dividends from it. I don't think that's his case because he's passionate about sports. But in five years down the line, that club is running itself off the sponsorships, off the gate revenues, 
And who knows, they can end up getting a very good broadcasting deal. So that's that's how I look at it. Fantastic. That but has it, been Sports Pages of the Week. Touchline is the show on y My name is Max Olasike. Sami Muraya alongside Ngara Kamui have been joining me to dissect about what has been trending with regards to matter sporting headlines, both local and beyond. And of course, up next is review preview of London 7th happening. Currently, Andrew Kenya has already lost their first game against uh, Fiji 24-17. And of course, looking far probably to bounce back against Samoa in their next clash at 320. Uh, PM East African time before they wind up their group clash against France as far as the second last leg of HSBC World 7 series is concerned. Let's listen in to what uh, Jeff Ganglodori said with regards to uh, player allowance and player welfare in the wake of you know some of the senior 7s players getting to social media platforms to complain and lament uh, on the tribulations and predicaments they have been going through and some of which have led to their failure to sign contracts. Jeff Gangler, KRU President speaking. 